Hello everyone, this panda. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I am not oof, I'm not a superhero. Alright? I do go through my weaknesses, and right now I'm going through it. My leg caps have been killing me after the last live stream I did at uh, uh, Japan Town. After that, I went to meet up Yuki, and then after that, I came back here and started editing. But what I did was actually when I was processing and rendering stuff, I went for walks. And now my cat muscles are like, they really are feeling the, the heat right now. So. Yeah, I'm not a superhero. I go through my phases. I need to relax. And so what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna redo that, that, that Japan Town's tour over. I'm gonna use my gimbal and the Canon 80D. Uh, actually, I'm gonna use the, the 11. I'm gonna see how it looks with the 11. Yeah, just use the 11. Uh, yeah, just do that. It's at F4. It's sharp. It's super sharp. At F11, F4. Super sharp as it is. Put it at F4, 5.6. Ooh, crazy sharp from edge to edge. Even though it might be a little distorted, but at least you get to see the view of how someone would actually really experience walking into Japan Town's community center and it's beautiful architecture it's like given self a purpose for self self own bit, uh, business individuals that own restaurants and give them a chance and I'm so happy to see that Japan town is surviving and like yeah and every other Japanese restaurant but that includes all the Pakistan restaurants, the Turkish restaurants, the Hadid restaurants, everyone. That's why I go walk around in my mouth. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I've been thinking about it for two days. I'm like, oh. But yeah. Oh, my legs are feeling it. And I'm doing this vertical because uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I guess uh, this is this is real life. I'm not gonna do like ooh YouTube professional editing on on a live stream. Ooh, I could do that. You guys know I could. I have done that before. You see me do that with my live podcast. That's easy piece of cake. I mastered YouTube better than most YouTubers. Here it is. Most photographers master YouTube better than most YouTubers. <laughs> and it's the YouTubers that are learning from the photographers that are becoming photographers and understanding the reason, point of light. No, listen to what I just said. Point of light. Yes, I said that. Look up that term. You find out. Most people don't use it. Like, just like nor, nor parallax, or did any one of you knew what the nor point was? You guys kept asking me questions about that. What the, what are you talking about in landscape? What's a nor point? That's, I just made my point. <laughs> oh yeah, guess what? The tummies are on. Uh -uh. No, these are not setas. Setas have the metal pieces in the back. Is it tummy? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you guys know me. I am. Here's the thing, too. Like, when I was in Japan town having lunch, a lot of young Japanese people were interested, not just in the camera gear. But they notice, because when I walk up to them, I spoke 
Mm, not native way, but more like Hakana Hakana. Street. And I guess this is a night nice snack. <laughs> so I got options here. I got this beer. I got this orange juice. I got this ginger ale. And I was drinking this ginger ale. And my stomach kind of liked this ginger ale. So I was kind of thinking about mixing it with the icky beaky. Because uh, honestly, I. I only love that drink when I want to have it when I'm, I'm, I did something really amazing in my lifetime. <laughs> you know, I appreciate Yuki going out her way and like replacing it and all, but I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> That's the thing. But anyways, uh, and I know she knows I that. She knows that. But she knows that I'm probably going to give it to people, and that's what she probably want me to have, in a sense, you know, because that's what she knows I like to do, communicate. So, I guess, yeah, it all works out. See? She understands. <laughs> yeah, but sometimes Yuki and I have difficulties, and that's because of, our, you know, we, oh, our political opinions have changed from last time we had a fair value and a balanced political view on how Japanese society is going and how the economy and what they should do better and what they should not. It's, yeah. So, but it's not just that. It's also her parents and my parents. They don't get along and I don't talk to Yuki's parents as much, but in a pinch, I will call her parents, which I have. Like, I'm just worried. And that happened recently because of COVID. And that's why I kind of decided I wanted to come here to, to see her, but I was hesitating because you guys know she is not, a, she's not one of those nice Japanese girls. She's one of those. She, she will let you know in front of your face. She will embarrass you and tell you the truth. She will make you cry. That's who she is. I like toughness from Japanese women, strong, independent women. But oof, she literally was to a point where she was almost to. I was like, you're doing your job way too well. <laughs> I wasn't telling her stop because some people do need to be told. I was actually eager her on to do it. I was like, yeah, you should. <laughs> and the reason why is that, like, as I explained before, people will ask stupid questions. <laughs> Are you a photographer? <laughs> no, I'm, I just have these things for, for uh, sexual pleasure. <laughs> Don't get me started. It's crazy, I know. Hold on, I'm going to prop you guys up with the, the, the juice bottle. But yeah, it's, it's like, I don't know what I'm doing with this gear then. If, if I'm not a photographer, I don't know what I'm doing with it then. <laughs> and then like the guy at the store, he asked me for ID for the beer, right? And I totally like dickheaded forgot that I didn't bring my other passport, right? My U.S. passport, right? I was like, oh, I don't have my pa other passport. Are you going to accept this? <laughs> he goes, what is that? I was like, that's my other passport. I showed him. He's like, you speak good English. And I was like, you're rocking? <laughs> he goes, yeah. I was like, how long it be hot here? Not more, not He's like, whoa. A little, little sketchy on the dialect, but close, I understood. <laughs> I was like, all right then, Saddle, can I just buy this? I'm going to give probably give this away to someone anyway, you know? So I'm like, I am doting myself by myself. 
because there was a bar place I saw up there. I wanted to try it, and I was like, I can't go to that place. It's, it looks so fancy. It looks like you have to bring someone with you. You know? You have to bring someone with you. And I wanted to bring someone here, but I didn't see any guests that's hanging around that looks like they want to do anything. Everyone's like glued to their phones. Like, uh. listen, what I do on my phone, I want to make money. <laughs> you guys are just gossiping. You have to, like, work out idea plans. Why are you on vacation or why are you in the States, like right now? We all in the States stuck, stranded. Try to find ways to make money. So when when it hits hard, you have enough to like bounce back. I dig it. Mm. What do you mm, wow? Why do you think I'm like staying for a few more other days? Not only that, I just got a contact with a, a rollerblader rep. He wants to try to save me rollerblades on the house. He wants me to get back and skate in. He's like, I know you can do it. I'm like, I know I can. I'm Panda, I'm unstoppable. <laughs> I don't know about rollerblading. They don't have to carry more weight. That's the problem with traveling right now through this pandemic. The weight is bothering me, and this is why I need to properly rest. If I'm going to continue to do this, I need to get a better hand truck for the weight. But I need to think about transportation space. I like those beds and those wagons um, that expand and fold, but that is considered as luggage. I want to make something that's super thinner than that carbon fiber. You can have models. You can have, you can have a 75 pound limit. You can have a 150 pound limit. You can have a 200, 250 pound limit. You can have a 350 pound limit. You can, with carbon fiber, you have so many options based on how many layers of carbon you are wrapping as you wrap with carbon fiber. This depends on the strength. So. Think about it. Carbon fiber has so many flexibilities to what we can do with it. We can build chairs out of it anyway, and they last longer than steel. Even though I've seen some very interesting things, how steel can survive a thousand years. So in carbon fiber, we don't know the extent of his lifespan through the duration of like 200 years because carbon fiber is actually not a new thing, but actually being, it's new to what we can do with it now based on the technology that we have. Just imagine we programming carbon fiber cells to molecate, to transform basically to any material and fit any material, not fit, but fit any material. Imagine that. I think it could be done. It's carbon fiber can be. Just the just compounds itself. I feel like 
it's a start in how to, I guess, revolutionize nanotech. I don't know, but it sounds like a good plan to me. Scientifically, it does. Start from and work your way up. Because over time, when you get results, you get actually results that you were surprised. That other results that you do get surprised by can result into better things that work with other material or molecules or other things that are can we compound or damn I just think about that sushi why that was ransom yeah I was talking about the nanotech thing and I was thinking about sushi just like because I want uni <laughs> I'm looking for a good, the place that I want the uni from is closed. That's what I did. <laughs> In front of the shop, I was like. <laughs> I was like. I walked all the way over here. But not that. I could have Googled up and emailed, but I was like. I don't know if they update their website quite often or they say they were open and it turns out they were closed. <laughs> they are permanently closed. But anyway, yeah, I, I just follow you guys. Go check out my Instagram. People going nuts. What? F18? What? How did you get that sunburst? But that sunburst came with, with a little, with a little side of that, that slight lens flare. That sun was beaming down on the Japan town early. This that was taken at twelve twenty-three a uh, p.m. And yes, I'm I was in Japan town at eleven o'clock because this is the day that you go to the restaurant, get your food, and sit outside. In support of the restaurant, that show that you are buying, but you're gonna sit outside with the food they eat. Like that's why that area that I've been sitting in in the live stream is where, I'm, like I said, I support everyone as much as I can. It's important to give a donation. Yes, we want to. It's there. Tips. Yes. That's why you see it, they boost outside first. Every restaurant that's inside the Japanese center mall, right, in Japantown, has a booth outside. It's like four of them, five of them mostly. But you can tip or donate. So do it now. Yeah, the Yuki's like, what are you doing here? Every day, it was like, I want to be downtown. 
of the nut jobs. <laughs> I don't like downtown. I like downtown for other reasons. That's called photography. I don't like to hang out downtown for pleasure. I don't like to go downtown for, you know, living, even though I'm at the hostel. That's different. I'm a member of the high hostel. I've been a member for the last eight years. <laughs> I think some households need better managers and better hospitality, but I'm still going to be a, a member of the high U.S. international hostel. And yes, it's a 501c32. And mind you, they gave their other hostel up to help the city house homeless. So, yes, everything is done by contract. I would do it by contract. It makes sense. Because if anything gets damaged, the city is responsible for it. Honestly, I like that other, I like the Tenderline Hostel. The reason why I like the Tenderline Hostel is because, check this out. Look at this kitchen. Whoa, that's a beautiful kitchen. That's a gorgeous kitchen. Oh my God, oh my panda. I would live in this kitchen. Trust me, you guys know I used to be a chef. So shoot. This... <laughs> Look what I'm wearing. I, I make ramen. <laughs> like, I'm very talented. But that's a beautiful kitchen, right? But check this out. At the ten line, who cares about the kitchen? Even though they got a big kitchen there, it's the breakfast. <laughs> that makes the difference. See? Guys got to do your research. <laughs> I'm telling you guys to, all the inside scoops at every hostel I've been to. Which ones are better than others and why would you want to go to this one? Trust me, I got a guide. Or basically every hostel in the States. Even with the new ones that just open. I see you. I'm coming to visit. <laughs> I'm definitely coming to visit to some new ones. I'm gonna test you. I'm gonna test your patience. Mmm. Pen is gonna give you a little rattle. Not deliberately, because he wants to also get to know you and have fun. But he wants to just quite have you understand. He wants you to be on your toes because some people that come through the door are not as friendly. So you gotta understand how to pick up on certain behavior patterns and signs. And you can, I would tell you from first hand, or not just you, you can, I, people that I know that help support Francisca, psychologically, we, you can tell someone is deceiving you or someone is actually telling you the truth. I, on the other hand, would be honest with you. I try to hide things because some things are personal, like some of you guys don't know that's what is going on between me and my family in Japan. You guys don't know stuff like that, and when I tell you things, you're gonna, oh my god, I'm so sorry about your loss. See? This is why I try to be as, not as screech, but as a trans, as, as <clears throat> I try to be as transparent as I tell you to go check out my Facebook. Because there, it's there. Just look, it's there. A history. This is why Facebook is scary. 
<laughs> they remember things that I don't remember. I'm like, what? Oh, wow. You freaking me out, Facebook. What? I want to forget that. Why would you bring that up? Oh, you just frightened the crap. See? Facebook doesn't understand that. That's not what the computer wants. Some of us want to forgive and let go. You bring back bad, bad past memories? That's true. <laughs> Come on, Facebook. That's not hot. Mm -mm. Take it from me. I work with, I worked with international students, international people, people that had international relationships that wanted to actually understand different cultural languages. Like I had Allah from Saudi, wanted to speak Japanese and Mandarin. I introduced him to his, uh, my uh, Chie, then I introduced him to my other friends. And he got all involved and he learned. See? He adapted and guess what? He started learning Mandarin and a little bit of Cacanese. And he married a Mandarin Chinese native. And they lived in Saudi. And had a little cute little baby. And I am Uncle God, Godfather Panda. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I just wish Allah and his family could come back to the States and live, but no. He also and his family had to like stay quarantined because uh he has symptoms of uh, uh of corona. So he was saying that he must stay quarantined. I was like, okay, you're not coming for five years. <laughs> so, but he's doing well. That's, that was, a, what, August? He's doing well. Everyone that I know is doing well. Not so fortunate, some people that I know. I haven't talked about the people that I know that, that I know that died from Corona. I just don't talk about it. It's not. I'm not one of those YouTube channels. I want to gossip about it and make you feel sorry for me and my. And no, you have to feel sorry for how we, as a as a as a nation and as a a human species. Should have taken more better responsibility, being more quarantined instead of thinking that everything's okay, we can loosen up a little bit. You guys don't understand what you guys don't understand what COVID nineteen is. In the very beginning, they said it. Back in twenty fourteen, TED Talk. I was there. That's why I was like. So it's a mutated virus. It can transform, it can mutate, it can generate, it can actually learn. <laughs> and look what it's doing. It's learning and mutating to a new strain every single time. And everyone failed it. Yes, back in 420 TED Talk, go, go ahead, look it up. Come on, guys. If you really want to be very educated about what COVID-19 is, this is why I wash my hands all the time and had the sanitizer. I know what to touch, but I'm not perfect. I'm not saying I'm a saint. But even though I got tested four times, since leaving Wisconsin to go back to Vancouver to come to Portland, <laughs> and then helping the hostel there, which I don't regret. At all. I think Jim and Britta are the most... I don't, as, as long as we come into that hospital and 
this is like the first time like me and Jim and Britta had like a like mm, group hug kind of talk and like support like word to word. Because last time it's like visit, like, yeah, 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 yeah. He's always busy with the with the um Zig Zig Mountain because they also rent out Zay Zay. So you can rent, you can go there if you want to camp. They own the acres and land out there. So yeah, in the property, it's a tedious job. So now you understand why I did my part as leadership, as a member, and also guest and ticket sponsor and ticket guest role. Sarah, Anika, Okay, so guy. Hmm. So we go. They needed the help. If it's three of them, they still needed the help. And so every time that kitchen gets used, it's every like twenty minutes that kitchen is being used. Think about it. Those three cannot. Those three cannot continue to go back and forth while they have rooms to clean, blankets to clean, dishes to clean, uh, towels to clean. Uh, put more sanitizer, clean the bathrooms. They gotta do a whole bunch of stuff. They keep, let me do that for them. But no one actually, other guests didn't see that point of view, I guess, except for Mike. Mike saw that. He was a quiet guy, cool guy, sick black hair, blondish. He understood. He didn't like some things either. He was like, how the hell did they don't wash that pan like that? Why would you put the pan? Yeah, we were our <laughs> so someone cooked eggs, right? And pretty much just did the wipe and then do it in the sanitizer and then put it in the rack. But guess what was in the pan? The egg <laughs> in the pan still. <laughs> And Mike and I was like, dude, you know I got this. This I, I clean dishes. Because I know Mike comes in there, he eats breakfast. I know he wants a clean pan. That's why I like the guy. I liked some guests. I liked all the guests, but there were some guests I really liked because they actually understood what the public health, public health guidelines meant. And some people were just careless and reckless and too, too stupid to know and too stoned out their mind. Stop smoking so much, you dumb dumb. You don't need it. <laughs> but yeah. And Mr. Hostel, the kitchen does. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it does, because Sarah told me. But you know what? I needed a break, and I got the break that I wanted. And guess what? I came here, I got a break, and look, I just made 300 bucks. So, ooh. Stay for three days more here into Wednesday. Yeah. So I paid what? 103, I think? For three days. Imagine I was at the Eco Lounge at that scummy, dirty hotel. I was paying 64 to $67 a night. <laughs> Pretty much just getting like $38 here a night. And I'm getting this. Wait, wait, let me show you. Look, Eco, Eco Lodge. Look what I'm getting. Look at this. I got a full kitchen. I got three stoves. I'm a baller. <laughs> I got two microwaves. Look at that. I'm rich, bitch. <laughs> let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. Look, look, look at my, look at my sink. Look at my fridge. Look at my dining table. Come on. Why would you stay at a hotel or a scummy motel you can stay at the high international hostels and get even any hostel provides this kind of hospitality. You get a kitchen, you get necessities, you get a free breakfast, you get entertainment, you get free tours, you get a guy that knows what they're talking about. I'm sorry that we're like, now you understand why I don't want to spend money on hotels and motels. 
because they are a waste of time and a waste of money. There's nothing cool about them. You can't communicate with people. It's like, would you go to someone's door and, like, and someone's like, yes, what do you need? Like, I just want to have a child. Go somewhere else. This, in this house, in this community, everyone wants to communicate. That's the difference. Hello, my name is Jesse. Well, I'm Panda. Nice to meet you. See? At a hotel, it's like, sketchy dude. Oh, my God. He lives next door to me. <laughs> you know? You guys understand that. That's... <laughs> I tried to... Oh, yeah. That's why I went down to downtown Eugene and started talking to people. Even the homeless drift kids was like, hey, man, what's up, cameraman? I was like, what's up, dude? I was like, what are you filming? I was like, I'm just doing my vlog. I'm just, I'm here for a couple of days, just trying to, fuck. I kind of like this town. Portland's too crazy. <laughs> they was like, yeah, man, they agree. They also agree. That's the beauty of it. This is why I kind of want to go move there. Because if the homeless youth or the youth, the youth adults are saying, like, they don't even want to go to Portland because it's just, that's not what they're about. That shows you that, like, there is a, there's a different, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a split in the homeless community about there are homeless that actually still want to keep the peace even though they don't have much. They don't have anything. But they understand the people that do have, they want to try to protect that people because they lost their chance. But they can rebuild it by giving it a second chance. And there are some that don't believe in that. <laughs> so, take it with the grain of salt. This is why I like going to hostels and communicating, especially in and all throughout the channels in Canada. That's why you see a lot of the Canadian hostels asking me or sending me like, hey, Panda, when are you coming back? Oh, I'm coming back. <laughs> I like I, I like with the Victoria's hostel because they have a top patio you can sit up there and just burn <laughs> and watch the city at night like, oh, you're so beautiful. <laughs> I'm not saying that it's purpose that it, but drink a beer, have some wine, just have that view. It's just like have a nice dinner up there with some friends. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. You see the hilltops. Not to, this is why I like to travel, guys. I, I, if I stay, this is why I can't work in one place for one year. It's a bad thing for my uh, employment, but I, at least I have a record that I work for our government agencies multiple times in state and local. Like, that helps, but it doesn't help that I'm working for one year. Why are you doing this? I like to travel. I can't stay in place. I tell, this is the thing, I tell the employer the truth. I don't stay in one place one time. I like to develop, I like to learn something, and I like to move on. And there's a reason. Because if I can move on and develop more stability, I can bring that back to you guys. As like a member or someone that used to work for you and still support you. But some agencies and some 501 cps don't understand that. They think after you leave, you're the enemy. <laughs> Fucking stupid. Just because I don't keep in touch doesn't mean I would still support. If they look at them, this is what they have to do. If you look at your finances and see who support you, then you would know. That's that's a smart five hundred one C three. Someone that actually takes the time and write it physically down, like, here is who supports manually. And if, let's say, you check in the hostel 
that you support or an agency or any 501c that you support and they have a brother sister channel agency they'd be like oh you support our brother our biggest sister and our bigger brother agency welcome why don't people do that kind of work and the reason why is everything is electronic here Nothing's done by paperwork, and this is why the Japanese still do paperwork, and this is why I still believe in the paperwork system, but sometimes electronic is actually better. <laughs> I like to pay and go. <laughs> I like to. I pay bills with my QR code. Yes, I pay the bills in British Columbia with QR code, but here, landlords don't use QR codes. Now they're starting to use it. Well, the luxury ones. But like, what about the the renters? They use, they should use QR codes to pay their rent. I had to use I had to use WeChat the whole entire time in China for six months. That's how I got so addicted to it. It's like, oh, this is easy. <laughs> Like, oh, wow, so easy. But be careful. In China, the WeChat chat, <laughs> they track you. If you jaywalk, and yeah, I got a ticket for jaywalking. <laughs> I got it in the mail. One day, I was at my, I was at my place, and, uh, <laughs> and the woman next to me, she's like, I was like, ni hao. And she's like, you got bad, bad. What did you do? I, what? <laughs> she saw my mail. <laughs> they said I got a ticket for jaywalking. And I saw that on the, the CCTV camera. So, then, yeah. So don't jaywalk in some parts of China, especially if you're using WeChat. Because they can tap in your bank account, and now you understand why you're missing $65 on like your, your bank account later on. <laughs> Don't do it. <laughs> Learn from Panda. <laughs> I was like, I got burned. I was like, <laughs> the reason why I got burned? Because I was going to take that $65. And I was going to freaking get wrecked. <laughs> Karaoke. Hmm. I don't know these couple of drinks in karaoke. <clears throat> but <clears throat> I can't believe it's only eleven o'clock. That's just freaking Guys, I didn't go to bed until about four thirty. I woke up about seven twenty seven. Didn't get in the shower till about 9.30. I was at Japantown by 11. I left Japantown by like, what, 3? Came here, start editing. I sat downstairs in the library lounge. Sat there straight for three hours. Blast it out. Boom. Photos and video at the same time. Mobitates. Panda edition. <laughs> Aha. Yes, do this. <laughs> and I was like not satisfied with the with the quality of that Japan tour, because sometimes it, here's the thing: in linear mode, it shakes more, and Y it shakes less. And I don't like to put it in wide, but I like linear more. See, <laughs> it's like. Ah, I can't get my way sometimes. <laughs> so now I want to pull out the freaking professional gamble and the Canon 80D and just walk around that thing. ninja walk. <laughs> Someone did complain about the ninja walk in my vlog. So I'm going to show him the ninja walk. Now he's going to be like, I'm going to tell him now you owe me $100. <laughs> This is why, like, I didn't want to get the gimbal. This is why I got rid of the other gimbal. 
because like it's a pain to carry two gimbals because each gimbal is for different sizes. One carries four pounds, the other one carries no, three point eight pounds, the other one carries five point five pounds. And what I have carries five point five pounds. Plenty enough. It can actually mount and fit the Sigma eighteen thirty five. I've seen some videos on YouTube that say you can't fit the eighteen the eighteen to thirty five art lens from Sigma on it. Yes, you can. I already did it. <laughs> I showed it in a video multiple times. <laughs> yeah, you can. So stop it. That's just that's just a little. little. <laughs> I did it multiple times. I'm pretty sure you can fit it on. And all you need is a different mount plate for it and put your own mount plate in a quick release. Yeah. <laughs> if you want the center of the gravity to balance correctly, hey, yeah, invest in some quick release plates, bro. <laughs> Trust me, it's going to work out. And buy the additional extended adapter for the limbs that holds it up. Yes. Is that any limb gimbal manufacturer actually still sell, sells the extender? Because you come, gimbals come with the short version, but there's a long version. Yes, there is a long version. I saw it on the BB website. I was like, what? Bring it. Take my money. <laughs> I'm too bad enough on the gear for Alright, one more beer and I'm gonna call it quick. Cause I gotta drink that icky biggy. <laughs> I don't know how we're gonna do that. And like Yuki, this is not the hostage you can do it. You know, like if I was in Portland and I received that bottle of yeah, I can like have it sit out all day and not have any problems. But this is fucking San Francisco and children come well, kids come here a lot, but I don't see kids, but kids go there too a lot too. But the difference between the Northwest Portland Hostel, this is a city where <laughs> you never know. The Portland Hostel, in, it's more, they're very observative. <laughs> they know when they see someone in like, hmm. I'll give you a chance. I'm gonna keep my eye on you. <laughs> just, just expect that. And I love Justin. I'm sorry, but someone said they was picking on his car tonight. I was like, what? Do you want me to buy a ticket to come up there and kick some ass? He's a cool dude. He's a very nice guy. I think he needs to. This is what he needs. He needs the perfect woman. Trust me, he gets. He's a. You know how many girls that came to me in, in the hospital and told me that he's a good looking guy? I had the Claudia, the other girl that. What's her name? Sarah. The other Sarah. Uh, there was a. There was like, is Justin single? I was like, I can't actually. I can't answer that. You have to ask him that. <laughs> That's what I had to say. Because I know that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've been through some, some drama with a girl named Bria telling me a story about him. So, <laughs> it was like, I looked at her, like, after, like, I was told the truth by multiple people, including Justin. Like, okay, Justin, I'm sorry, but your story makes sense of someone else's story. I just want to clarify it. He goes, oh, someone told you else? He didn't know someone told me the same story. But I was like, yeah, I just want to clarify it. Thank you. Now I know you are telling the truth. <laughs> it's like, it was a guest that don't know Justin. That saw the behavior and hanged around the quad and thought something was odd with her. And then people saying that she was very judgmental and yeah, and she was. Especially for me, but then she want free stuff from me. 
and everyone else. Basically a butcher. If she could get it, yeah. Calling it out like it is, a moocher. I work for my moochin. <laughs> There's a difference. I hustle. I bring content. I bring sweat and tears to my to my photographers. I make people like, ooh, ooh, I wanna go out and shoot. Oh, that damn. Honey, I'm going. I'm leaving. It's two in the morning, baby. There's some there's some stars that need to be photographed. <laughs> uh, I like the humor of that though. It sounds like a comedy sketch. <laughs> but I like Yuki's neighbor. I didn't know she had a French neighbor. <laughs> I was like I was like, what? She's like, she's half her half Japanese. I was like, oh. Are you trying to like tell me something? <laughs> she's like, no. I thought you guys would get along just because she's worried about her family. I was like, oh, okay. I haven't been back in Paris in a while. So in the last like, what, two years? I talked to my landlord, but, but that's all. I haven't talked to a lot of people. Because I'm most I'm mostly south. I'm in Lyon most of the time. I'm not in Paris all the time. I go there just to fuck around. <laughs> I need Lyon for like games most of the time. Yeah, <laughs> games. <laughs> I've seen games. Yeah, I'm, I'm I'm all in. And yes, I used to play. It. I don't do any of it. Not even rollerblading, wakeboarding, snowboarding. I don't do any of it anymore. I got injured badly. So this is why I've been healing this whole entire time. Car accident and all of them? Yeah. Kind of messed me up. Lots of money. And look at that. Can we grow a straight beard? It looked like a cheat. I look like a I'm gonna say this now and excuse my language beforehand, disclaimer YouTube, it's not to be disrespectful of myself or anyone else, but I look like a fucked up cheer pet when I try to grow my hair out. <laughs> Just say it. You know how much skin they had to take from one part of my body and stitch it to another part of my body? Yeah, that's why I don't grow hair on chest, back. I'm like the cleanest 40 year old man you ever seen in your entire life. <laughs> I want hair on my chest because I you know, you know why? I know a lot of Japanese women that love men with masculine. Features. Oh, that's why I want it. <laughs> so many hot Japanese women love that feature. Like, oh, I need it. I can't grow it. Look, proof. I can't grow it. See this? Flat, no hair. Look, skin, silky smooth. You can literally cook bacon on your skin, which I don't recommend because uh, technically, uh, heritage, heritage wise, I am Muslim. And bacon touched his body, I'm pretty sure I am going to, uh, <laughs> I'm not going to go to a place where I want to go. So, I know bacon is, I don't know. I think, in my opinion, I somewhat as. Or Muslim and people kind of love bacon, let them go for it. Fuck it up. <laughs> do, 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 do what you do. I cannot discriminate. This is why in Japan, when they make okonomiyake, I make okonomiyake with bacon for a customer. I didn't discriminate. I didn't say, no, you don't want bacon, you want chicken. <laughs> 
I didn't say that. Or for me, as a pescatarian vegan, I didn't say, oh, you don't want bacon, you, don't, you want vegetables on that. No, I cooked it as it is. And this is why at UW, all the ISS, not all the ISS students, but all the ISS students and the International Student Services at UW, when they, it's like, oh, Panda, can you cook okonomiyaki for me? For, that's why, if you look at my Instagram, I had a dinner with the medical students, I had okonomiyaki on that table. <laughs> and that's the first thing they eat, they ate. And I was like, yeah, you didn't even eat my other pie. Oh, we don't want that. It was a Turkish pie. I kind of like the Turkish pie. I learned that from my Turkish roommate, Morat. When he was living with me and Jimmy for six months. But he was such a playboy. Such a playboy. It's always with a different girl every night. It's like, what the hell? I'm like, dude, I'm sorry, man. Like, you can't bring girls here anymore. <laughs> this is not a... But I love what I love, the American women. <laughs> you always say that. I get it. I get it. So listen, listen, listen. I have to tell him, like, one day I took him to the <laughs> union. And I was like, listen, you can't just, like, bring girls. Because me and Julie don't feel comfortable. You bring a girl to our place... That chick would be crazy enough to steal something. Like, literally. She might steal our modem. <laughs> He's laughing because he thought he was funny because I said the, the internet box. I was like, dude, you know how much I pay for that modem? That's my private modem. That's not freaking Charlie's modem. I paid 300 bucks for that modem. That's a, that's, we, get, we get 300 megabits per second. This is back in 2012. 2011. 2011. I'm like, come on, dude. We we got this. You living in the condominium, man. This is the living life. <laughs> Be proud. And he kept bringing the girls, and he brought one girl over, and I started to like her though. Because you know why? She was Latino, she's Spanish, and he liked Spanish. And I was like, yeah. And she was not just. She was different from all the girls he dated. Most of them was like bit titty, slim. She was like chubby, Spanish, Latino, she had that thickness. I was like, Mora, that's different. Yeah, bring her over. Yeah, 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 yeah. He kept bringing her over more and more and more. I was like, yeah. And then he disappeared on a, what a douche. <laughs> well, secondly, he moved out. Say he was moving somewhere else. Turned out. He moved to Chicago at first, then went somewhere else, but didn't call her back. Yeah. Hmm. Sorry, ladies. Uh, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I hurt. I hurt Yuki's feelings and. Physical, like physically, like we got into this argument of our financials, and her parents are like, "This is why her parents are the problem." If the man, <laughs> if the man ain't working, if the man at the time is not making more than you, he's not worth it. It's not about that. It's, it's about love. Dude, she didn't make no more. Uh, I was, I don't understand this, but he was. Uh, uh, he had a point, but he was arrogant. I get it. She's your only child. I get it. I know how that feels. Do you? Like, do you know me? Hey, you don't know about me, do you? Who's that? And that's when he he flipped. And that's when Yuki flicked on me. Why did you tell him that? We told you not to tell him that. Like, I had no choice. And that's when everything went southwise. About Nami. They never knew about Nami. Where is she? With, with the grandparents. Don't worry. 
I take care of that. And she's the she's she's the back muscle. Trust me, that means it's gonna be the back muscle. <laughs> but yeah, they took that very uh differently. And that's why Yuki <laughs> now you understand why Yuki's still mad. We could have had a future. We could have had something, but they don't like her parents don't like particularly single parent parents like hiding things and once it's done was hiding, this is the reason why it was hiding it. Because you guys take shit out of context. Even sometimes Japanese residents take things out of context. They're good people and everything and they they think wisely all the time. But they do take things sometimes differently. And sometimes it's really hard to explain to them why you did it. And, and you don't want to make an excuse for it or a good reason for it. You just, you try to make it right but to tell them like, I want to protect people. That's all you could tell them, is to protect people. There's nothing wrong with that. And I wish more people to understand why, who I'm trying to protect, but I don't tell you certain things. If they seem mysterious, I give you hits for a reason, because I'm trying to tell you. I'm not trying to hide it. I'm trying to tell you, but I try to protect the people also that are involved. And I hope you guys understand that. I hope a lot of people understand. So, I want to ask you guys a question. So, do you think Trump is going to get uh, win this election after this so-called lawsuit, whatever he's trying to pull? The reason why I say that, because it doesn't make sense. Why are you trying to sue Biden when you should be looking at your own party? Think about it. We went to GOP. <laughs> huh? You got so many pockets actually betrayed you. <laughs> Come on. The party that you will pee. Why are you still trying to attack Biden and Harris? That's not the reason. Listen, they gave you a chance. Trump. They, they, they used you. I'm sorry to say it, but I'm going to say this, people. You may think Trump is... A bad guy in which you take that with a great insult. I'm not going to say that on my words, but I, I think he was also eliminated as well. I think the government took advantage of him too. <laughs> they eliminated him because of his stupidity and his competency. <laughs> yeah, I believe so. I believe everyone in Congress took advantage of his stupidity. Even last season Pelosi. But look who she's doing now. <laughs> May I say more? Come on. Don't tell me they're not portrayers within the same righteousness community. Come on. Really? I'm looking at you.
I'm sorry. Uh, if you guys think, well, you, uh, you, you didn't defend Trump, but you did defend his morality. Yes, I did. I defended that because for a reason. I believe he was used and betrayed and eliminated by the government. How many times you have been eliminated and deceived by the government or said you promised something or they would do this for you? How many times it has happened to every civilian businessman? Even when Trump back in the day was a businessman, how many times the government screwed him over on a on a on a ID he had? And you wonder why he wanted to become president. <laughs> he had ideas that the government probably screwed over him so many times. So don't think of, don't think of his <clears throat> don't think of his presidency his presidency as a waste of time. No. He actually did have a motive. He probably got fucking like joked around back in the day because he was such on like mind you. Guys, he was bit. Hello, Hillary. Hello, Mr. Bill. Hey, <laughs> we friends. Remember, he was on both sides at one point. I looked in that history very well. <laughs> I deep didn't dive in that joint. I was like, really? And the Justin gave me a book recently from the hostel, 1982. Oh, 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 that changed my life. <laughs> and I left the book at the hostel. What a fucking idiot I was. <laughs> but it's okay, because now that book is going to be paid for it. Somebody else is going to read it. And they're going to find the golden globe in there that's going to set everything straight. I was like, oh, okay. Trump did have ambitions, because he felt that the government felt him on projects that he wanted to actually accomplish. This is the main reason why he wanted to become president. This is the reason why he, he's, he waited enough time as an older gentleman to become president. Because he said it in, a, in an older news article. If you look into it, he stated that uh, if you become president now at a younger age, you won't learn anything as a businessman because he'd be falling off a track or some sort of... Because he went into bankruptcy at one point. Remember? So, yeah, the government used him too. So, <laughs> don't they use them all? Because he's not a government official. He didn't serve the army. He didn't serve any government for more than 10 years. He's a businessman. Everyone else we, is that is sitting behind any Senate seat right now, any political seat in there has served government more than 10 years, if I have eight, eight years. This is what, President Trump's first four years as a president? It still doesn't count. <laughs> why? Because he didn't get reelected. That's why. A reelection makes you more dominant, makes you more promising, makes you more a figure. He did get really elected. So that's why he's going for the lawsuit. This is why I don't understand the lawsuit. It's not with Biden, it's with your own people. <laughs> they never had your back. They, they pretty much to they toyed with you the whole entire time. They wanted to see what you were doing. Where's Newton? That's the question. Think about it, ladies and gentlemen. Where is Newton? He's supposed to be doing with the stimulus package negotiations. But he's not right now. Where is Newton? <laughs> I don't need to be political to know. I just know. Because I pay attention to the details. And I have friends. My friend, Francisca, just first Asian, Korean, American, Korean woman. Be the district of Madison, Wisconsin. 76th district, by the way. Good friend has supported this channel, by the way. Recently, just gave me two hundred dollars to go to the Eagle Hostel and uh, hotel. And realized that was a bad idea, <laughs> but she was the one who supported that. So kudos to her. But like I said, <sighs> I 
Where's Newton? The people of this country need money. I've been living out my savings this whole entire time. I'm still waiting for unemployment. Finally, it might go through after, what, six weeks? <laughs> I'm going to see that next year, though. <laughs> but I've been living out my savings account this whole entire time. And then donations from you guys. and so you, you, All of you guys have been, like, it's very helpful. Like, seriously, very helpful. But... I got I got bills, like insurance bills, like for my gear. Kind of I need that paid because like I, I learned a lesson a long time ago. Like have insurance because it's, it's, it's gonna pay off. I learned a lesson. Trust me, that's why I insured the both cameras, all lenses. If I sell it, I have to report that to my insurance company. Like I'm selling it, so I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get a deductible, right? Because I'm downgrading, I should get some type of deductible. But then again, they know I'm upgrading. <laughs> They're like, nah, you upgraded. Your deductibles, you, you stay the same rate. Because you're going to get another camera, right? Yeah. <laughs> so if I get another camera, here's the thing why you should stick to your 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 current rate as your insurance for your gear. So if you sell something, you report it, then you get another gear, you report that, your insurance rate might change. You might pay more you, or you might pay less. But if you just keep the, the current insurance rate, listen, you just tell them, I'm going to keep the same insurance rate because the camera kind of of course is the same as my, pre, my previous camera. So if you're going to get a camera, make sure you price it the same value as your last camera. You're just upgraded. <laughs> and think about it. Back then, the camera cost, back in 2012, a camera like would cost about the same amount of what you could get for the, what, Sony's A6400? What is it, what? What is that, 1100 bucks? $900,000 that now? Hey, easy. Back then, the Canon 7D Mark II was like, what, freaking 14, 1500 bucks? Just what was the body itself was what? It was like 1200 bucks by itself. <laughs> Come on. That's why I say. Think about your insurance rate and make sure that you price it right. Like, hey, since I'm paying the same rate and I think this is reasonable, but if you get the product lower than you always do report that. Say, hey, I got this really good product. It's replacing the camera, but I got it at a lower at a, at a better price and I, I need you to assess it. Recalibrate. If you say even one dollar, three dollars, even five dollars of your insurance rate, that makes a big difference in a year. Because that could go to electricity, the phone bill, that could go to anything. So every dime counts pretty much. That's what I'm trying to apply here. So take it with the greatest salt. If you guys want to support, hit that PayPal donation. I got all the donation links down in the description below. I don't need to tell you guys that for like 74 minutes of this video. You guys know the routine. You should know. Look at the descriptions. You gotta have some type of like support. Just gotta drink more of these. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, the other, I'm gonna just go give these away to other guys. I'm gonna keep my ginger ale. <laughs> I'm keeping my ginger ale and my orange juice. Sorry, I'm keeping my orange juice. I got 15 minutes. It's the kitchen closed at a 12. Apparently. There's some dishes. It's, <laughs> I don't know. I kind of want to come down here with a snack at 3 o'clock in the morning if I'm working in the middle of the night. 
As a videographer, videographers snack in the middle of the night. Photographers too. Editors, actors, speeches. Midnight snacks is a must, especially if it, if a place like this kind of should keep the kitchen open. Just this is the rule. This is what I think this hostel should do. Kitchen is open, but the stove is closed after twelve. Period. Means there's no stove access from twelve to seven a.m. Period. Other hostels do it. I think they should implement one like that too. So when it hits twelve a.m., they put the signs up on top of the stove, say this stove is no accessible. It says stove access is between seven seven a.m. and twelve a.m. So after twelve. After the 11:59 p.m. takeaway, no must. That's it. Sorry, no. Gotta wait next day. <laughs> but yeah, but Well, I did, I did some really, really good editing today, I guess, but I'm not very happy with that freaking sunflare that's in my shot. I took a shot of Japantown, and it was, guys, if you haven't seen it on my Instagram, you better go check it out. People are like, what? F16, the fracture start to kick in. I'm not technically with the iris. If you use the ND filter and the polarizer, Oh, it, it works wonders. Oh my God. I, I'm, I'm praying that it'd be the next, the next, I don't want to be a bad, I want to be, I want to be on the team. I want to be on the IRS team fully. I want to be on the international team. I want to be on the international team. I want to like spread my love. <laughs> Even though I talk to them quite a bit on Instagram and share my stories with them, they even offer me like discounts. Like, hey, Panda, you've been very supportive. And I say, oh, at this time, I can't afford it. I can't do it right now. But thank you so much. But you know what? I still support you too. Guess what? I post right now. Bang! <laughs> yeah, they offered me something before and I didn't take it because I, could, I, I didn't want to spend the money. I needed it for something very more important. A 45 F1.4 with a prior did me nice, but I'm not very happy with how people reviewed it on the cannon. It was very soft in the center. You have to stop it down to only get sharp in the center. And it, it's strange. It was like sharp on the outside, but not sharp in the center. But if it's sharp in the center after you stop down, it was, I saw that in several videos. I was like, I don't think I want the 45. Because I like 45 sharp at F1.4 in the center for a reason. That's why I use the Minota lenses. <laughs> That's why I stick with Minota lenses. This is the main reason why I love the Nota lenses. Manual lenses have just the right amount of texture, a lot of sharpness, a amount of contrast, even color distortion. When it comes down to skin tones, it just, the richest lenses just, it does something just beautiful to skin tones. It's just like, these new lenses, you're just like, oh, I gotta correct the skin tone. It, it may make, make it may listen. Don't get me wrong. New lenses make skin tones look much brighter, sharper, but it doesn't bring out naturality. It doesn't bring out characteristics. It doesn't bring out how vintage lenses used to make skin tones look so genuinely unique and natural. That's what I'm trying to apply. This is why I, I just like Rintis lenses and Minota lenses. 
And if you never had a Mendelton lens, you got to try it, Wadi. I'm pretty sure you you would love it, and you would never disappoint. And listen, I did I did a Mendelton lens test, and like it got so many views, and people like, wow, like this is why I love the Mendelton lenses. This is why I grew up a Minota. My first camera was a Minota GX1. Then I had a GX7. Then I had uh, the DX2000 from Sony, which is like the Minota line. And then it went from like SSR. Then it had this other brand. And I had the first EVF camera that my father brought, which was the uh, what is that, the DSC-R1 that had the, the first EVF back in 2002, 2003? It had an EVF, but its max ISO was 1600. It was ahead of its time, and uh, what's his name did a video of that? And I was like, yes, and I left a comment and told him that my father had this, his father had the exact same camera, and I was playing with this camera, and this is what made me fell in love with Sony. Because I'm still using the Nota, and I'm still using Canon, and I'm still using the Nikon F3, uh, F3. And that's when I fell in love with Sony. It's like, oh, this is real time? Oh, this is cool. <laughs> no way. This is 2003. That's when I brought the A... 55, A65, A77, A77 Mark II, yeah. Now you guys know my history in photography. Now you know I just, I told a secret. Oh, snap. Now you know my secret. Ah. <laughs> it tricked me. You guys tricked me. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But yeah. I, I, that's why I still have a Minota lens. <laughs> that's why I got this. I got that 50. <laughs> Cream in the crop. Bang. <laughs> I'm keeping it. It's that simple. I don't care. You got a fucking three thousand dollar fucking lens. Who gives a crap? I got a Vintage lens that cost me what? Fifty bucks. I bet you I get more better results out of that fucking lens than your little fucking thirty five hundred dollar lens. And not only that, people will probably respect me more for even using a bitches lens. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, like, don't get me started. <laughs> People would give me more respect for even using a vintage lens than a newer lens. Because newer lenses to me is like clickbait. It's like, everyone wants to post a video about the same lens at the same time on YouTube. But this is what I'm going to do. You take that same lens, I'm going to compare it with a Rich's lens, and I'm going to smoke your review. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. And every YouTuber like this should do it too. Don't review the newest lens. Review a lens that is compatible, that is old school, vintage, that has show promise results when it comes down to sharpness, Contrast, color distortion, color rendering. If it bleeds colors, if there's ghosting, flaring, yeah, corporate aberrations, yeah, compare it. Because that's when you you get more more of the youth and the more budget users users than the more people that want to spend money. Like, it makes sense. Thank you for making this video. Thank you for contributing. Thank you for making the comparison. So you just helped me save money to just establish if I spend 
$2,500 for a lens or spend $300 for a lens that is vintage that actually is close to close enough to this lens performance. And mind you, it, it only takes a photographer's technique. Every photographer is different when it comes down to editing. They, everyone has a technique. Some people add more sharpness, some people like a little bit of sharpness and with a little bit more clarity to bring out vibrance and color and, and depth. And then some photographers like to emphasize HDR photos and some like textures better and some like, you know, S curves better than more than, you know, natural look or natural brightness. So yes, there's a difference it's photography of different people, how they add and categorize themselves as editors. So take it all with a grain of salt. I'm Panda. And I just want to help. If you want to help me, all you have to do is help someone else. Pay for it. That's all I ask you to do. And if you want to do it, I can help you do it, which I think I already have done that. <laughs> but, yeah, I just, I think everyone needs a fair chance to, you know, get their name out there and show what they can do. Because a lot of photographers that I know that don't get the recognition right now are not being talked about. And they do such fabulous work. Some of these half ass I'm going to say, some of these branded, commercialized photographers that only care about the buck and not about the art. And I know I can see it. It's like, yeah, I got my name in it now. Now I don't have to worry about stuff. I can just mingle and kind of sit back, do some real stuff now and then. No, you do real stuff 100% all the way. That which makes you push you for it but also gives, gives you an opportunity to expand your community and your family. You give other photographers a chance. Hey, I'm going to do this. Hey, you take over my show for a day. Or you do something for me a day. And, you know, that would be kind of cool. Someone take over someone else's show for a day. Get them a chance to show them what they have. But no YouTuber does that. They do critiques of someone's studio. Mm. No one, that's cool. It would be cooler if someone lets someone else take over their YouTube channel for a day. To get them a chance in the spotlight. To show them what they can do. But creators don't think about that. They think about collaborating. But they don't think about just stepping away for a moment. And let that photographer read your script. And make, make that script... <clears throat> Make that script their own by with their voice, and you just take it with a grain of salt. But my battery is about to die, and I'm gonna talk to you guys in the next one. You guys want to support this channel? Just subscribe and like and share. That's all I ask for. If you guys want to do do donate to the links down in the description below, the PayPal, Remy, or Cash App, that's all on you. I don't. Have, you, that's your obligation. But I want you to subscribe, hit the notification bell, share the content, leave a comment. And also tell me what you think and tell me your thoughts because you are important more than anything else right now. And you always have been. You're a human being. Your voice always matters. Peace.